Let's look at callback functions and how to name them correctly. First of all, if you put the callback function into a field, then the naming should start with on. And after this on prefix, we use a verb. So for example, name your callback function field on and after this prefix use a verb in simple present or you can also use the past tense for your verb. Also, you could call it on tap or on tapped. This is also fine. Let's also look at some other cases on submit, on cancel or on canceled in the past tense. You can choose on signed in, on saved, on refresh and so on. Next to the naming convention of on and then the verb, there's also the naming convention of on noun plus verb. So for example, the prefix is on, then the noun is user and the verb is changed and this is then on user changed. Let's look at some more examples on page changed, on date changed, on date submitted, on date saved and so on. For this naming convention of noun and verb, it is pretty common that you use the callback function and add a parameter to it, such as user, page, date, whatever you define as noun. By default, the void callback doesn't have any parameters, so it is basically a function without parameters and without any return value. We can also change it, therefore you also have the value changed function and inside of it we place then our parameter and this parameter matches then for example with this noun. Let's also look at the other cases. We have for example an integer for the page number, then we have the date time for the date that we have defined, then again a date time and again a date time for the date that we have defined here inside. Of course, you can also use the naming convention of on plus verb to have instead of a void callback a value changed with some parameters such as user, int or address, etc. However, if you choose this naming convention of on plus verb, then it is more important that the surrounding context also supports this name because this name itself doesn't give so much information on changed. So what is changed? Okay, we see it is a user changed, but it would make sense if it is, for example, inside of a user widget, then the surrounding context supports this name or on progress, this inside of a progress bar widget and on saved inside of an address widget. And here we have then the address that is saved. Otherwise, if you are in a different context, such as in a homepage, then it makes more sense to be precise and also use a noun. So what is changed on this homepage? A user is changed, on user changed, and you don't call it anymore on changed simply because on this homepage, many things could be changed basically. So it is not pretty clear. And also if you are inside of a user widget, then you also name it on address saved, for example, and not only on saved because inside of this user widget, we can also save the name, the age of this user, etc. Let's also look at some more negative examples. Here, a function is wrong because a function should always have a return type and some parameters. So this is normally correct. However, there's also a shorter way of writing this and therefore better use the void callback and a void callback always has a return type of void and the function has no parameters. So don't write it yourself. You can simply use the void callback. Let's also look at another bad example of a callback function. Here we write void function and inside of it we have one single parameter. So from the syntax everything is correct. However, you don't need to write this manually. You can also use the syntax value changed and this is basically doing the same. It is returning void and inside of our function we have a single parameter. For this case it also makes sense to use the on noun plus verb naming convention because here we have then some information about what this parameter is. It's basically a price, our integer. So we don't need to define it twice like int price. And then here inside we have again the same information. Of course, if you want to have multiple parameters inside of your function or if you want to have a return type, then you can also define it on your own. However, if you ever can use some fast ways, then try to use these fast ways of void callback and value change because it's also shorter. Also a negative example of your callback function is if your parameters don't provide any more information, such as what is the string, what is this integer. Also don't put something like this inside string well. So what kind of value is this? In num, what kind of number is this? Instead be as precise as possible for your parameters, such as string name 
or int h. Here we know for each of these parameters the exact meaning. All right, let's become more practical. I have created here two callback functions on submit and on name changed, and we want to call them inside the build method, inside the elevated button. Right now we have an anonymous function that is executing some actions, which is also fine. However, we want to change it to our callback function. And calling the callback function like this is not good since you first of all define an anonymous function and inside of it we put our callback inside and this can be even shorter if you only execute this callback. Therefore another wrong option is to write it like this. Instead only write it like this that we put the callback directly inside the property. In case your callback function requires a parameter then you cannot call it like this because you need to put also an anonymous function in front. Next we want to look at the case that we are not putting a callback function from our class fields inside. Instead we want to put a callback function from our method inside. And specifically here we want to look at how to call this method. First of all don't call these methods like callback because you think okay this is basically a callback so never call it callback. Don't call it tapped or clicked because these are really unspecific about what this button is basically doing. Here it is called submit so it would make sense to also call it submit. Also the Flutter team uses the convention of using handle as a prefix and then using a verb for example handle submit. Let's also look at some more bad names for your callback method. You shouldn't call it with a prefix of on because this is only used for the callback if it is a class field. However, in this case it is a function or a method and therefore you should never use the on prefix. So the reason for this is that the callback class fields should be called like this with the on prefix. However, method should not also be called like this because if you do so then we cannot differentiate from outside if it is basically a class field or if it is a method and therefore we choose a different naming convention for the methods. So all in all only fields that have as a type a callback function should use the naming convention where they have a prefix of on. If you have another type such as string, int or whatever type you like then never use the on prefix because this is only reserved for the void callback functions and other callback functions. All right, let's go back to the methods that are used as callbacks. And since this button is called cancel, therefore some good examples would be simply to call it cancel. And a method name should always sound like a command. So we cancel something, this is a command, as we have learned also in the previous lessons about methods. Or you can use the prefix of handle before your name. This is the Flutter team convention. So all in all you can use this cancel inside of your callback or you can also use the handle cancel and both of this is fine. Let's also apply the knowledge that we have learned. For the first field this is a callback function and therefore you should not call it simply callback. You shouldn't call it void callback, data link callback and so on. You should also not call it change price. This is more like a method name and a callback function should not sound like a method because this is a field. Then we also have the name on verb plus noun. So this can be fine maybe but prefer maybe to do it differently on noun plus verb as we have learned it. For the next example don't call it manually void function instead use void callback that is provided by the Flutter team. Next this callback function is wrong because our parameter has no name. However our parameter should always have a name and also we have no return type so you should specify void in case. Also here we have a name for our parameter but this is not a good name. Always make sure to choose a good naming and this is a better case here. You see first of all we have a return type of void and then we also put the naming inside and the type together. As we have learned this syntax is correct. However there's also the shorter case that you should prefer using a value changed. Let's also look at the next case. Here our callback function is called on button pressed. You don't need to be so specific that you also say that a button was pressed. Simply keep it short and precise like on pressed. Next imagine we have a widget that has two buttons, a submit button inside and a cancel button and therefore we have two callbacks. But these names are pretty long so you call it on submit button pressed, on cancel button pressed. Better choose a shorter name such as on cancel pressed and on submit pressed 
so you don't need this button inside of your name. And you could even choose a more simple name such as on cancel if the on cancel button is pressed or on submit if the submit button is pressed. So as you notice, this line is really unreadable compared for example to this line, which is really short. So always try to keep these names really short. Here is another example of a really long name on add marker button pressed. So for example, we have here a Google Maps widget and we add a marker. And if we press on this button, then we call this callback function. Prefer to make it more simple. You can choose on marker added. This is more easy or on marker pressed. Both of this are more simple than this long word.